Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I am ready to drop on you my brand new strongest shaman I've ever made storm totem build. And I apologize, I know I sound very nasally, I'm fighting a little cold right now, but the show must go on. As always, I will break down every single facet of the build. Everything is timestamped in the description below if you need to bounce around. Let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Starting off with some gameplay. Now, the skills we are using for this build is Tempest Strike, and we are using Tempest Totems in that skill. Storm Totem, Etera's Blessing, Gathering Storm, and Fury Leap. And the build's very easy to understand. Basically, your Storm Totem does a majority of the damage, and it does, like, insane damage. This is currently Corruption 586. And what we are doing is we make totems, the storm totem consumes them, turning it into a super totem, and then it just clears absolutely everything on the screen. Now, I took a lot of feedback from the community and I made the decision to not put upheaval in this build. I know a lot of people are using upheaval for this build. I have decided against it because it's undecided if it's bugged or it's not working right and it's doing insane damage. So for this version, we are not using upheaval. But what I am using is Tempest Strike, and Tempest Strike's Gladiator of Lagon is giving us over 150 base spell, and it absolutely crushes. Small example of this, you've got the triple fire bosses. This is 525 corruption. And look at what we do with our Tempest Totems and our Storm Totem just eats them alive and what's crazy about the build is the actual range you have on the totems one dead two dead three dead shade of oribus at 525 again the tempest totems are putting gladiator of lagon stacks on us which is giving us a huge boost to our Storm Totem. We also get a huge boost from our Shock Chance. 520 Corruption, Shade of Oribus. You are... Dead? Dead. Let me show you how to recreate this build. So now let's break down the skills, starting with our main damage dealer. And of course that is summon storm totem. And I'll try and show you the order in which you want to take these notes. First thing you want to do is come straight to the left and get the core node. And what this is going to do is give you base spell lightning damage based upon your shock chance. And you are going to have a ton of shock chance. You're then going to come straight down and get unmatched storms. This is going to make it where your storm totem is now going to use storm bolts. You're then going to come right down here and grab Thunder Totem, which basically just means that your Storm Totem is now going to consume. It's going to eat other totems to make itself stronger. You're then going to bounce over here and get Exploit Weaknesses, which is going to give you 45% multiplicative damage. Now, if you have more points than me, let's say you have 27, 28 points to Storm Totem, which is possible. I would actually pull a point out of Static Field. I would pull a point out of Storm Reach, and I would try and get Power Shunt right here, which is going to give you a 90% multiplicative to Critical Strike Multiplier. I don't have enough points to reach there, but if you do, it is an awesome note. Moving over to Etera's Blessing. First thing you want to do is come down here and get Touch, which is going to give you 30% cast speed for your Storm Totems. You're then going to come up here and grab Renewal, which is going to give you 100% chance to make a healing totem. You're then going to take Cleanse and your added healing. And your last four points are going to boost your overall resistances for Poison and Elemental and your um, Minion Stun Immunity. Moving over to Gathering Storm. Again, we want to supercharge those Storm Bolts. First thing you want to do is come down and get Lightning Penetration and Excited Bolts. This is going to use mana to supercharge your bolts. You're then going to come over, boost the multiplicative damage, and get a chance to repeat. You're then going to come down and get boost to area. And lastly, you're going to come up and get extra shock chance. 
Moving over to the newcomer, Tempest Strike. I did so much testing. I used Thorn Totem over and over again, and then I landed on Tempest Strike. And really what we are taking, first thing you want to do, is come down here and get Tempest Totem. And we're going to boost the cast speed for our Tempest Totem. So now instead of it having it a melee strike, you make totems. You then want to come up here and get Gladiator of Lagon. You're going to make it where your Tempests are triggering Gladiator of Lagon. And you are going to make it where you get 100% increased effect on your minions, your totems, and your stone crows when you have 50 intelligence. Now, to be clear, 100% effect means that your shared spell damage goes from 4 to 8. And you can have as many as 20 stacks of Gladiator of Lagon or an additional 160 base spell damage. I tried to make Thorn Totems work. I hated it, but I really, really like Tempest Totem. You're then going to come over and you're going to get rid of Frigid Totem and Wind Totem. So you only have Thunder Totems and it boosts your cast speed. And then you're going to come up and get attack speed, less mana cost and boost your lightning penetration based upon your uncapped lightning resistance. Last but not least, Fury Leap. This one is very easy. You're going to get a global uh, spell damage, frenzy, health, cleanse, cooldown recovery, vulnerable, and then the final five points you could literally put everywhere. You can go into stun chance. I just take 100% area and we cast more storm bolts. Those are the skills. So now let's break down the passive tree. At time of recording, my shaman is level 98, and I will show you where to put those final two points. Now, for this build, damage is not a problem, so you're going to notice I go very heavily into survivability mechanics. We have six into Gift of the Wilderness, eight into Natural Attunement, five into Hunter's Restoration, one into Hunter's Emanation, and five into Cornered Beast. Cornered Beast is something I take once in a while when, again, we are not worried about damage, and it's going to give you 20% damage reduction below 35% health. So this mixed with your Endurance, you become very tanky at low life, but yes, it definitely gets scary. Moving over to Shaman, we have eight into Shamanistic Infusion, five into Sky Warrior, two into Stormbringer to get us Avatar of Thunder. This is shared lightning spell and shared spell lightning penetration per attunement. Five into Earth and Supremacy, four into Fist of the Stone, help us with our health regen. Five into Ancestral Speed, this is going to give cast speed for our totems, which is very important. And when you cast a totem, you have a one in three chance to gain haste for three seconds. You're literally casting totems all the time, so you're going to have haste all the time. Eight into Rune of Awe. This is shared 16 spell. You combine these, it's 26. Five into Elemental Shrines. Help with your mana regen. And then eight into Iron Bark. This is going to give you health regen per three attunement. Moving over to Beastmaster. Eight into Yersin Strength, of course. Damage taken from nearby enemies, minus 16. Five into Boarheart. This is going to give us more damage reduction, 15%. Two into Call the Pack for the health. Six into Natural Fortitude. We are ha we do have a some strength, 20 strength. So I still take the health regen here from that. And then I have seven into the chase. I would like to have eight, but the reason why I have seven is because I pulled one point out because my final two points are going right here into plating. Now, your final five points, technically, you could put wherever you want, okay? I need the endurance, and I'll take the little bit of armor. Again, I am going into survivability mechanics, so I'm going to put the five points here into plating, but you could honestly put them wherever you want. Those are the passives. Moving over to Last Epoch Tools, we're going to break down the blessings, idols, and gear, starting with blessings. And again, we are heavily into survivability. We've got life, life regen, all resistance, and then double armor. Take whatever blessings you can to help keep you alive. When it comes to idols, I at first use the cast speed and critical strike chance idols for totems, and then I axed them because we don't need the critical strike chance. And yes, the cast speed is nice, but we don't struggle with damage at all. So again, I basically went full survivability. We're using four double life idols. We are also taking... 9% to health on our Primalist Idols with minion spell damage. So you're still going to get some damage out of your Idols. But again, I went Survivability. You can go cast speed if you'd like for your totems. Now, when it comes to gear, this is one of the more complicated builds that I have created. 
And at first I was using this set, then I axed the set, then I came back to the set. And the reason why is, of course, Gladiator of Lagon. Inside of the skills, once again, you have this node. And this is, you're going to be able to trigger Gladiator of Lagon from your Tempest hits on your Tempest totem. And this is going to give you four shared spell damage. And this is doubled if you can get 50 Intelligence. And obviously, this set is going to give you critical strike chance for your totems per intelligence. So those two work perfectly. You're going to get a huge boost to your damage, and it's going to take care of all your critical strike chance from this set. That being said, you need to make sure that you have 50 intelligence. On top of that, want on our skills for our totem, you have the core node, which spell lightning damage per 10% shock chance. And because of that, this shield becomes required because this shield can roll with a 430% shock chance on attackers. So what I'm trying to get at is when it comes to required gear for the way this build is set up, you need this set, which you've probably found a million of them, or if you're in Merchant's Guild, the items are free, and this shield, which is almost a guaranteed drop from Lagon if you ever fight him, also very easy to acquire. I would say that these three items are required, Nothing else is required for this build. Now, best in slot. Are you ready? Jewelra's Obsession. Then you want to try and get chance to apply Armor Shred on hit. The Armor Shred will apply to your totems, and it will take care of Armor Shred. You also want to use the Storm Carve Testament. This just gives you a big boost to your lightning penetration and damage for your totems. We are using an Omen of Thunder. Cooldown recovery for Storm Totem. Boost to your spell damage for your totems. More lightning penetration and plus level to totems. And then we are using a phantom grip. We don't need actually the critical strike chance from this. Ultimately, it's going to give you plus two to minion skill levels. And it's easy to find with LP. Again, not required. Now for the other items, helmet, level to storm totem, minion critical strike multiplier, armor, cast speed for totems, minion critical strike multiplier, because again, you have a guaranteed crit. Boots, intelligence, movement speed, double life. Amulet, minion, minion, double life. Now I should probably just show you where I'm getting the intelligence from. I put it on the phantom grip. You get intelligence from this ring. So basically double rings and then boots. And then I used intelligence on the LP for my storm carved testament. That is where I got the 53 to ensure that I am over 50 for Gladiator of Lagon. That is the gear. So now let's talk leveling. Aaron, this is great, but how do I take it from level one to end game? Great question. Now for me, it doesn't matter if I'm a Beastmaster, Shaman, or a Druid. I level my Primalist the exact same way, and I use the skill swipe. It is so easy. You could literally get to end game with one skill. And what you want to do is come to the left and grab these three notes. It's going to give you leech. It's going to give you area, but more importantly, it's going to give you kill threshold. You then want to come down and grab feline hunter, which is going to give you a boost to your global attack speed. The second skill you want to take is war cry. War cry does two things. It gives you berserk, which is going to boost your swipe. But more importantly, it comes down here. It's going to automatically trigger maelstrom. And the third skill you want is maelstrom. And you want to come down here and take it in its physical form. So basically, you are running around, swiping, killing enemies, using your kill threshold, boosting your attack speed, and then your war crying, which is going to automatically generate your maelstrom. And then you run around and kill enemies with an AoE. Maelstrom can also give you haste and frenzy, which just means you're going to move through the map faster and kill enemies quicker. Now, lastly, you want to put an unspecked fury leap on your bar. That way you could still jump around even though you don't have it specced into. So you get a movement skill. You will fly through the campaign. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. What do you think of my new Storm Totem Shaman? Is there anything I missed? Is there anything I can do to take this to the next level? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. A couple of asks at the end. Ask number one, please like, share, and subscribe if you think I've earned it. And if I haven't earned it, I'm going to work harder for you. Check out the Discord. It's where we run all our community events. We're going to have a community event for the last Epoch Cycle Reset this mid-season event that EHG is doing. We're gonna have a community event for Dwarven Realms game launch. We do a game giveaway every two weeks. It is an awesome place to hang out. 
check out the Discord. Lastly, the best way to support is Patreon. I've got multiple levels. We have game night coming up Friday night, lots of exclusive content and access to the VIP lounge. Patreon's the best way to support into the future. First link in the description. I'm done. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Erin, out.